Greetings, everybody. This is Instructor E, and I am super excited about today's video because we're going to talk about some actual forensic parsing tools that I actually use at my job. And these are open source tools that are free. You can download them, you can practice with them, you can use them, and they are very much legitimate. I mean, I've used these tools um, to cross check my work, I've used them for uh, triaging and analysis. So therefore, let's get down into what they are. The two tools are A-Leap and I-Leap. Now you can get these from GitHub. Um, I-Leap is used for parsing iPhone, used to parse iPhone devices, whereas A-Leap is used to parse out Android devices. Um, there are some, there is a lot of material here. Um, and I probably do an install video to kind of help you all out, but there are lots of instructions here on what to do. And I'll give you a couple of pointers here, but this walkthrough video will definitely help you in terms of, of getting up and running. Now, some components that you're going to need is you're going to need Python. So you can get that from python.org and you're just going to download Python. It's the home page. And you're going to need the Visual Studio tool. Um, you can get the free community version, which is open source and easy to use. Um, and it's not going to cost you anything. Again, I believe in open source. Um, open source tools are wonderful. So I try to get those out there to you all. So when you're installing this, just remember that you're going to have to follow these instructions. And quite a bit of it is... Um, the use and manipulation of the command line. You don't necessarily have to know command line, but you can manipulate in command line. Now I've used this tool. I'm in my Windows 10 VM right now, but I also have it installed in my Kali tools because this is just a versatile tool here. I'm not gonna lie, it's very simple and straightforward to use. Now I won't be demonstrating a leap, but I'll show you a demonstration using a leap. So one of the questions that you may ask is, how do I get this, get, well, how do I get an image that I can play around with and parse out and look at the results? Well, there was one other website over here and I gotta tell you, they have some good stuff on here. The Binary Hick um, actually has a repertoire of actual images. So you can get Android device images and you can get iOS images and you can, use these images um, to parse out um, for your practices in your digital forensic analysis. You just click on it, and then you're gonna download the zip drive. There's two different ones for iPhone 13, but I've already downloaded mine. And then you're gonna need to unzip it. So let's open up the iLeap tool. So when you install it, there is this little icon and you're gonna to have to, what I do is just save it, um, send a copy, set it to my desktop, um, create a shortcut to my desktop. And then from there, you know, you can just click on it and it'll open up. Like I said, this is actually a, a very, very useful tool. And again, I use it in digital forensics. Um, so you can see all the different types of data that it will parse out and it will actually do more by default it's only set to 239, but it'll do 279 different ones. Some of the longer, uh, longer taking processes um, are automatically unselected, uh, but you can reselect those backs, but back. But what I want to show you is just how many different things this will parse out. So we're gonna do a quick uh, parse and you just have to understand how to do it. So when you download that image, it's gonna come in a zip file. In fact, I still have it here um, in my share folder. I actually have it in my share folder, I'm sorry. So you're gonna to have to unzip it so that you can get to the various different images. And if you can tell, there's an iTunes backup, there's extraction logs. Um, well, they're not showing up because of the type of files I have displayed. Um, which you could change that over to all files a lot of times, but I don't see the option here. And then you have the extractions. So when you're opening up a file, 
you want to hit browse file that you're going to parse out you're going to go over to that and make sure you get the get the um compressed file now all of these are compressed file formats uh gz zip and tar so for those that don't understand, a lot of you, a lot of people recognize a zip file, but they don't understand there's actually different types of compression. And these are just some other ones that you can do. And I'll do a video later on talking about different compressions. Why do you have so many different ones? Uh, what's the best ones to use? Well, all that's situational, but kind of different, uh, but kind of a different subject from what we're doing today. So let's navigate to this image and we're going to open that and now we have to tell iLeap where we want to put that results at after it's parsed so i'm going to go to browse folder i think i'm going to documents i'm going to make a folder that says iLeap oops that's a shortcut ain't it <laughs> so we're going to make a new folder we're going to go iLeap results the thing about iLeap is that it will make a folder for each separate uh phone that it parses so you could just create the one folder for results and we'll select that folder so now we got everything in we got all the processes here that we want to use um on this distraction and we'll just hit process we'll see what happens it says it started uh please wait there's a few minutes so this is there's two processes that take the longest whenever you're doing digital forensics and, and we see it started now and that's the acquisition of the data the more data you have to acquire the longer it takes to make a forensic copy of that data and that's the image we already have thankfully we have that part already taken care of for us the other aspect of this is actually parsing out the information. Um, that's taking the information and putting it into a form and format that we understand. Most likely, I am going to do a video on installing iLeap, but the next actual practical video that I will make is um, one called uh, one on a software called DB Browser. It's a very good, very good piece of software. And we can use that to look at the cell phone databases. So we could take the same information that we're going to get from this parsing that we do and look at the actual specific databases. For those of you all that don't know, cell phones are built on SQLite databases. So if you have any kind of um, familiarity with sql or sql databases then know that's the way that your phone actually stores data is in these databases and sqlite is a is just as it implies a very light um light in terms of of, of being able to store information and non-complexity compared to a full sql database that an organization may use so right now it's just going through and it's parsing out all the information. It's actually going pretty fast. Now I'll go ahead and tell you I have not parsed this phone out. So we're both doing this for the for the first time. And um, I can see there seems to be a couple of different errors, but that happens. That happens when you're parsing it out. Sometimes it doesn't recognize um, certain areas or, or other times. It just may not understand the information that's presented to it. Uh, there's been times actually where I've had a image and it was corrupt. But it looks like it's done. Um, we do have something. We have a, so let's open a report. Now the report actually opens in a HTTP, which is gonna be your, one of your browsers. So on the side here, you can see all the information categories that were checked and may have data underneath them so let's start with the most obvious which is the account data well we can see that this email seems to be a reoccurring email that we see 
um, that may indicate that this is the email for the particular phone. And we can see there's a second page. So all of this, and think about it, this is freeware, and it, it, it did all of this, and it, it will work. If you have an iPhone or Android, you can make a, go a copy of it or a backup, and then bring it over and parse it out yourself. But you can see just all of this information, and we'll do a vi another video, I keep saying that, right, um, on what all this information means. What I wanted to simply show you is that um, there is freeware for actually doing um, analysis on cell phones. We hear about, um, you know, sleuth kit, um, autopsy, all of these for computer forensics, but we don't hear a lot about freeware for cell phones. Well, I just gave you two, uh, one for Android devices, one for um, iPhone devices. There's also a V-Leap that's used for vehicle infotainment systems, but I will be honest, it's not one I've used. Um, here we can see the call list for this particular phone. And you can see the um, databases of what these are. And that goes back to what we we're talking about. Now, let's say you don't know where this information is at. You don't know where the report is at. If we go back and we go into this, um, my documents and go into the elite results, this is where that report is generating. This is not really online. It just uses HTML as the encoding, which would use a browser. But all of our information is actually in here. All these specific web pages that you're seeing are all right here. So we can see the directory of where this is at right up here users documents elite results um elite reports call history and that's a specific page that we're on right now so as you can see this is a pretty good tool it works um so does a leap there's some discord information in here oh some good stuff in here if you could tell you can actually see some text message, I mean, Facebook Messenger app information. But one thing that you'll learn is that you have to correlate this information. In other words, it, it has to be corroborated um, and authenticated um, for use, especially in court. So you can see there's the device name, host name. Uh, we can see some of the Find My Device settings. We can see the IMEI, which is the International Manufacturer's Equipment Identifier. And then the IMSI, which is the International Manufacturer's Subscriber Identifier, which is the person themselves. And like, if you take a SIM card from phone to phone to phone, that's your IMSI. But as you can see, there's all types of information in here. So I urge you to install this, go through, and just familiarize yourself. Like I said, I will re uh, I will post a couple more videos on go actually going through this data, like if it was an actual case and what you're looking for and how you can dive a little deeper into that. But I'm already about at 15 minutes. I think we can stop here. And um, I hope you enjoy going through this. Don't forget that you can download one of the Android one of the Androids, oh, oops, close out the virtual machine, um, that you can download one of the Android images and use A-Leap. And non-surprising, if I open A-Leap, guess what? It looks just like I-Leap. So once you know, learn how to navigate one, you can learn how to navigate both of them. So I hope this was informative. I'll see you the next lesson.